Okay. Um, so, uh, Casey and Jennifer, feel free to jump in here if you have any um, anything to share as well. But I wanted to maybe start out with project updates um, and then talk about the flood evacuation plan. Uh, I wanted to talk about the land conservation plan and then um, any ideas for new projects that folks have uh, going forward. Uh, is there anything else that folks want to put on the agenda besides that? Okay. So in terms of project updates, uh, green infrastructure, the uh, construction of the rain gardens and the tree box filters, that project is uh, up and running. Uh, the Nunez Corporation is the uh, contractor and EBI is the um, project engineer. And the rain garden installation at the uh, elementary school, there are two rain gardens, uh, is supposed to be scheduled for August 13th through August 18th, which should work out well in terms of uh, the start date for school. And then they're gonna do the plantings in September um, just because uh, the plants would be more likely to thrive and survive um, with a later planting date. And that um, might actually be a good thing in terms of um, having students present for that in, in some way. And then uh, the tree the kids, Chris, can I just interrupt you for two seconds? The kids are, are not planning to be back to school until um, that 14th of September. The governor delayed them. So okay. the planting and the kids coming back, would they're not going to be on the same days or anything, are they? Okay. Yeah, it sounds like the planting's going to be more like September 10th. Oh, okay. That's fine. That would be perfect, actually. Then. Yeah. I just okay. wanted it to happen that week, um, you know, after Labor Day, um, before before the kids actually come, or after the kids come and they're settled in, or not, whatever. But the first day of school had been delayed to the 14th. Okay. That's helpful to know. Thank you. Uh, so the tree box filters that would go in in the center of town um, are scheduled for October 13th through October the 30th for, for installation. Um, and again, the same company doing that. Uh, in terms of our other construction projects, the Mill uh, Village Road culvert um, is, I believe, complete. Does, does anybody know if the paving got done yes, last week? Yes, it did. It did. Okay, good. It looks good. It, um, they did a good job. They, they put down quite a bit. So um, there isn't too much of a difference between, um, you know, the, the, the old pavement and the new pavement. You hardly feel it. Oh, good. And I thought the, uh, the culvert actually looked really good, too, in, in terms of the actual physical appearance of it. It was really nicely done. Well, I have to say I was very pleased when we had that intense rainstorm um, it was before the grass had even started growing. Um, not, there was no washout. I, I, I thought we would have had some damage and they didn't have any damage. So now that the grass is in, it's growing well, um, it looks good. Um, I think we're not gonna have any problems, which is really nice for tomorrow, you know, Tuesday night into Wednesday. Yeah. So are, are you all, you're all pretty happy with, with the way it turned yeah. out then? Excellent. Yep. Okay. I don't know, Kevin. Are you? I, I'm. I'm. I'm just speaking for me. <laughs> I went and looked at it really well. <laughs> yeah. Um. The look. I was ready great. to fight to have them repair the work that washed out, and there wasn't any washout, so I was really shocked. Sure. Yeah. The um. Um. The culvert itself. Yeah, I think the culvert itself was great. Uh, the ride on the paving. I was a little disappointed, but we'll see how everything plays out. Uh, why? I mean, it seemed like they put quite a bit down, Kevin. Well, they did put a, quite a bit down, but there's a hump in there, and I want to see how the water, if the water doesn't shut off right, they're going to come back, and they're going to mill it, and they're going to repave it. Okay. All right. I I, I mean, I, I was worried they were going to do cheap out and just cover it because they didn't do no, a good no, base. No, they didn't cheap out, but what made me very concerned is the day that, that Lanes or, I think it was Lanes, whoever it was that was there, that was a Palmer, that was actually doing the paving, 
they laid down the base coat and then when they were starting to get ready to lay the second or the, the top coat, they were having issues with their uh, tack machine, um, which really kind of blows my mind. They got this big whole thing that you can tow behind and, but that doesn't work. So they were using some kind of wand and I didn't like the amount of application was going down. So I talked with the engineer that was there and I told her to keep an eye on them. I said, you know, make sure they put down enough tack. I said, if not, it's on you. So um, she said that she did and, and you know, allegedly they, they put down enough tack, but the original, what they were putting down for an application was not sufficient as far as I was concerned. Well, it, when you look at it, they put down quite a bit, which was what I was looking at. I was not looking at the same thing that Kevin was. So um, I'll, I'll defer to Kevin on this. So let's, yeah, sure. let's keep you know, an eye on it. You know, and then the ride itself, you know, I think there was an issue when they were doing the, uh, um, the leveling of the, the area, making, the, you know, making sure the grade was correct. Um, you know, if you, if you hit that at like 30, 35 miles an hour, you definitely feel the, you know, your vehicle like hump down as it hits that low spot, you know, so long as the low spot doesn't really create any water issues and long as everything's shutting off properly, it should be all right. Because if people are coming through there 50, 60 miles an hour, if they get into an accident, well, it's their fault for going too fast. I was just going to say, it's almost like a speed bump. So I really wasn't too upset about it. All right. Okay. So um, Kelleher Drive culvert, uh, the uh, precast work on that culvert is supposed to be done by the end of August. And then it looks like there's a, about a one month construction schedule to install it. So presumably that would happen uh, beginning in September. Uh, I don't have an exact date yet, but we'll try to keep people updated when we have one. Um, and then we have um, a number of uh, design projects ongoing. The green parking um, design project is done. Tyne Bond completed the uh, designs for green parking lots at the uh, Frontier School and the Town Center. And there's also a green infrastructure design project being done by EBI, which involves um, additional tree box filters and rain gardens in several locations, including um, near the Town Hall and in historic Deer Deerfield. And that's ongoing. Um, they're just uh, in the early stages of that. Can I? Um ask about the town center art is that the Leary lot or something else that's correct yep the Leary lot and, and can you um, explain a little bit more like is it going to be um, permeable paving there or what's going to happen there? that's that's exactly right yeah in, in both okay. cases um, it's going to be porous pavement and um, there would be um, some green other green components to it like at the Leary lot they designed in um, a small kind of little pocket park area to oh, um, for people to have, you know, like um, lunch at. Um, and um, primarily, you know, the, most of the stormwater is going to be dealt with through uh, the permeable pavement, but there are some, some rain garden pieces um, as well. Um, so I was like, was, um, thinking also about at one point we were looking into um, an electric car charging station at the Leary lot. Is that part of the design at all or? It wasn't room quite a that, lot or? of project, but I think that is something. Kevin, can you respond to that? Yeah, my general understanding is, is, is the, the, in case you'll have to back me up on this one, as far as how the contracts have gone back and forth with Eversource, um, technically the, the, Solar charging is not part of the um, Leary lot paving project. It's two separate projects, um, mm -hmm. but obviously it's going to be incorporated into the, the new parking lot. Oh, okay. Just just um, asking about design wise. Um, you know, making sure the you know the space is left open for it with the handicap accessible space next to it and all that part but i know you're up on all that kevin yeah no that would be correct yeah so what we're trying to do is is because because allegedly my understanding is is the way that the major infrastructure is going in on here is it has the ability to, to put up at least five more stations wow 
you know, okay. to, to keep, keep going straight down. That's what the original infrastructure is supposed to be like. So we're putting in, I believe, two, two charging stations there, and then with the rest of it going along. But the select board at some point in time needs to make a decision on how this is going to be handled. Is it going to be free? Is it going to be charged? How are you going to charge it? How long are you going to be able to allow people to be on there? Right. Once you're on there, right. you know, and, and yeah. they've gone past their charging time, is it going to be charging their credit card a fine for staying on there too long? Uh, yeah. These are all things that need to be ironed out. So Right, right. That uh, Maybe that's, that's an energy that's committee me meeting. <laughs> outside my wheelhouse. Uh, uh, Lori, yeah. could, you, could you make have the energy committee put it on their agenda and then yeah. make a recommendation to the select board? Yeah, we'll have to do some research there. Um, but yeah, and that's, yeah, we'll talk more about that. But that's why I was interested in talking with Greenfield Savings Bank as a sponsor kind of thing. But um, it's it's great to know that this that's moving ahead. Thanks, Kevin. All right, back to you, Chris. Sorry to <laughs> take okay. us off course there. Anybody have any other questions about any of those things before we move on? Okay. So there are two plans that we completed as part of the uh, MVP3 or fiscal 19 grant that um, are now um, finished and, and really ready for the town's adoption. One is the uh, Deerfield River flood evacuation plan and the other is the Deerfield River land conservation plan. And uh, we ultimately would like to you know, have the town adopt these through the select board. The discussion that we had um, was that it ma made the most sense to have the MVP core group look at them first and make a recommendation to the select board about adoption. So I wanted to spend some time on each of those today. Um, I had sent them out previously to you all, so hopefully you got a chance to take a look at them. Um, so maybe starting with the land conservation plan for the Deerfield River floodplain. Uh, this was primarily a mapping project that we did um, to basically take a look at uh, the floodplain area, make sure that it was clearly mapped, and then to identify all of the land parcels that were within the floodplain area and come up with a, um, a fairly um, objective science-based evaluation system for prioritizing those parcels of land for preservation so that the town could ultimately determine where they wanted to focus their attention um, in terms of protecting the floodplain going forward with the you know, po possible um, idea that we, we might apply for more MVP money to do actual land protection going forward in the future. So, Really, the idea is, you know, which parcels are the most important um, from a floodplain protection perspective to really sort of help um, preserve that capacity for storing floodwaters um, in in the uh, the Deerfield River floodplain. So we did a um, a pretty detailed mapping um, uh, of the floodplain. We looked at uh, not just the floodplain maps, but we looked at things like um, core habitat for um, endangered and rare species. We looked at wetlands um, and you know we basically came up with a, a kind of a composite map that ultimately shows um, high, medium and uh, I guess it was high, very high and medium priority lands for protection. And then a matrix that lists all of the parcels and, and the data that we use to get to those scores of, of or those prioritizations. Um, so in the matrix, you can kind of see the really detailed breakdown where we looked at, um, we looked at whether the parcel was in the flood, flood way, uh, what its flood storage capacity was, whether it had uh, wildlife habitat value, whether it had viable farmland, um, what the threat of development was, and uh, whether it had wetlands. And then we kind of assigned a point score to each of those categories and came up with a, a total score um, and then broke those out into the high, the very high, high and medium categories. So what we end up with is, you know, um, 
a, a fairly clear map and and a matrix of, of which parcels the town might want to focus on uh, for preservation going forward. And um, I guess that's the, the basic, um, you know, gist of the plan. The, there's, there's obviously more detail in it, but I wonder if folks have any questions about any of that. One of the things that I did bring up with Kevin um, is we've had maintenance issues out there. We're not, you know, it's expensive if we really fix up the road adequately or not to poke hole. And so one of the things that we were thinking of is, or I was thinking of, was abandoning the town road. Um, uh, so far, the couple of landowners that I've touched base with are would love it because then they can post it and we can close the road. But uh, you know, I don't want to interfere. I don't want to interfere with um, you know the possibility of because if you take away the development value, there might not be any of ability to raise money to to purchase the land conservation restriction. So maybe we put that on on the back burner for a little bit. I mean, it takes a while anyway. So um, I don't know. It's just, just throw it out there that that's one of the things because it, every year we have issues with grading out there and, you know, get, there's always damage. I mean, because it does get flooded on a regular basis. Which road are you referring to, Carolyn? Uh, Kevin, is what's the name of that road? It's Pokes Hole, but it's, uh, it's, I don't know what the name, you know, it's just out in the meadows, North Meadows. You're talking about the one that runs past the wastewater treatment plant? Yeah, but on the other way, if you're going up towards Greenfield. Okay. So we wouldn't abandon the part that gets to the, the sewer treatment plant. We, we would abandon the part that's on the right-hand side that goes up to Pope's Hole. Okay. But there's a lot of, there's a huge amount of traffic you know, people access the river there and they cause a lot well, of damage, I was, crop damage. I was just going to say, Carolyn, that kind of intersects with the other <laughs> project I've been involved in. And, and I mean, I love that spot. I would hate to have that, you know, shut out another opportunity to get to the river. Um, so that's a tricky one. Well, Lori, I know what you're saying, but what we need to do is press the state to develop an access right there by Cheapside bridge there's not the best access there you know i know it's a safety issue but if it was not designed properly the state owns that whole section to the um, house there and and they were supposed to put in a handicap accessible access to the river and they never have and so we need yeah. to that. that's one of the oh, things we're really? trying to do in the next round of the environmental bond bill um that would that would be nice but it's it's not, <laughs> it's not Pogue's Hole. So yeah, I mean, it's just interesting. I know that there's a lot of people that will, that will cause, um, that will cause um, a big reaction if that road is closed to the public. <laughs> I know, but you know, the farm, I don't the, have farmers, the, answer, but. the farmers take a huge amount of uh, damage hit every year on their crops. People are just not very thoughtful. Yeah, it's causing yeah. them thousands of dollars every year. Um, huh. There's three different farmers that are out there. So, I mean, if people were respectful, there wouldn't have been a problem, but because people right. can't contain themselves, then this is where we have to come into play and, and, and deal with it. Um, yeah, I wish, I, it it would cost I wish us, they could be a heads up for people, but yeah, I know. It costs us, you issue. know, from police, the police have to go there a lot and then, not, and then we have to maintain that road. And if we, uh, I mean, it would cost us, I mean, it would save a huge amount of money for Kevin. I hear you. <laughs> Don't like it, but I hear you. I mean, I, I see it's a complicated issue. Yeah. So um, the other thing that the plan does in the sort of final chapter is talk about um, strategies for funding and programs that might help the town to, to do land preservation in that area. Uh, so there's obvious things like the Agricultural Preservation Restriction Program and Chapter 61A, the kind of traditional methods of, of doing things, um, but also using uh, Community Preservation Act funds, um, using the Conservation Partnership um, Program, uh, 
and then the ASEP program, which is a federal program, the Agricultural Conservation Easement Program, is another um, possibility for getting some federal dollars uh, involved in, in, in that. So we tried to um, give some fairly detailed information about each of the programs and options that are out there. Um, and then also working with um, land trusts like the Franklin Land Trust to try to um, bring in some private donations and, and other resources uh, that might be helpful in, in that regard. So that's kind of the next step here is um, there, there is a series of next steps that are on the final pages of the plan. Uh, and I just want to kind of quickly run through these. Uh, one is to hold a townwide land protection workshop for landowners, uh, then reach out to landowners of the high priority parcels to determine their willingness to be involved in land protection. Uh, third, seek MVP funds to enable um, a package of land protection steps. And then fourth, uh, help actually help the landowners with um, completing the required application work. Fifth, work in partnership with Franklin Land Trust to create a large matching fund pool. Um, and then um, pursue communication with uh, various partner organizations to coordinate the efforts to protect the land and work with specific landowners, uh, uh, in particular, the, the uh, private schools that own a lot of the parcels there. Um, so uh, those are just in, in summary, kind of the, the next steps that the plan envisions. And uh, many of those are things that we could consider to plug into a, a next round MVP kind of grant, um, if that was something that the town decided they wanted to do. So any questions or comments about that piece? Um, this was this Gavin. Uh, the, only, the main thing that I'd be very concerned about is, is trying to see whatever we need to do to get that section between five and 10 and Mill Village Road opened up. That has to be our number one priority. Um, the simple fact that that's what's killing us at that end of town, you know, um, I did see some uh, some emails about the the culvert um, that's right there that goes underneath five and ten. Um, I looked at it again this morning. Yeah, it's filling back up again. But if you look on the back side on uh, the back side of the candy kitchen, that still stayed fairly clean. But again, what the problem is is it's it's got capacity to go through. But the problem is once it gets to the other side of the road, um, you know the state can only go so far. And then once they stopped, that's it. That's that's where the water stops. Um, I think getting that opened up or restoring that stream between the new culvert and five and ten, that would be that would be my personal first responsibility or, or that's where I would go. You know what I mean? Oh, so you're talking about really what, where we would put resources in the next grant application. Correct. Yeah, I have to agree. Um, the Franklin Land Trust went prior to um, Tom Curran, Rich Hubbard had signed off on it and, and Tom Curran is 100% on board already too. They will allow us access. They, have, they hold the conservation restriction. And again, we can use um, public health as a, as a reasoning because that, you know, although we've been very lucky, thankfully to for Kevin, uh, getting out mosquito dunks and stuff like that, we haven't had any mosquitoes turned up anything yet. So, um, you know, but it's still, that's a major vector there for West Nile disease, and it has been for seven years. So hopefully nothing will show up this year, but that's really because we've been treating the area. And um, so I don't know. I mean, that we can build our story, no problem. Right. So maybe just trying to stay focused on land, land conservation for a second here. Um, does anybody uh, have any other questions about the, the strategies for land conservation or are you comfortable with um, recommending this plan for adoption by the select board at this point? Yes. I guess um, I, I just, oh, I, go ahead, I, Tim. Sorry, sorry. Um, I went back and looked through my email and I don't actually see the plans that you wanted us to look at 
So just for yeah, me. Yeah, I was looking for it also. I don't know if you, you can send forward it, it again. To me again. Yeah, that would be great. yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry if you. Uh, I could have easily d deleted it, so I'm not saying that you okay. never. Sent you did it. send a map at one point, right? But I also couldn't find it. I'll <laughs> go back to Thursday the 23rd at 10:28 a.m. is when Chris sent it all out. Thursday which, the which has the land plan plus the flood evacuation action plan. What okay. date? Uh, 7:23 at 10:28 a.m. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Thank you, Kevin. Hey, Chris, I guess just out the only where did you come up with that that cover for that uh for the flood evacuation? The photo, you mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a great photo. That's actually just off the web. It was, I think, in the in the recorder at one point or something. Really? Yeah, it's a pretty scary. amazing picture. <laughs> that is scary. Yeah. Um, I guess the only two cents I would throw in is about um, um, collaborating with the um, Franklin Conservation District group that is looking at river access. Um, right. You know, if we can get some conservation money to, I don't know, I'm, I, I want, I'd love us to think creatively about river access, like even um, issuing permits for people to, you know, park certain places and things like that. I would. I think people, if we ask them, would rather pay than have the whole idea of river access denied from us. So, <laughs> Lori, we're working really, really hard. We're working on that final report right now. And I have to tell you, we're hoping to get 10 or $15 million in the bond bill to have river access. I, I mean, that's oh. what we're going to ask for. Okay. That'd be great. Um, oh, okay. And, and so we've been working, we've, we have a circuit rider. We have $42,000 to support a circuit rider to help with land conservation. We have another, you know, I think it was 38,000 to do this river access. Well, I mean, we're coordinating as any dollars that we can to handle this problem because it, I mean, it is definitely a problem. So I, I want you to know that I'm not just shutting down the river. I'm just trying to figure <laughs> out ways that we can have Good okay. Um, I'm just, I'm, yeah, I've just come back from um, another trip cross country and I'm telling you the way a lot of river, um, towns have shown off their rivers is just inspiring and, and sign educational signage and things like that. So um, I would hate for, for, yeah, I would like us to do that with our river too. <laughs> so, great. The problem is that it comes down to money. Do. Right, right. But, it comes but again, down to I money. think yeah. I think I think if people, um, you know, people m probably would be willing to, like I said, buy a, a season pass or something like that. We pay to go to museums. We should pay to enjoy our natural resources. That's my point of view. So <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering, I'm wondering what those other communities, and I don't want to get off topic, are doing to control the behavior and, and activities, because Charlemont and the state police are ripping their hair out every single weekend. Yeah. So it's not just hey, open the rivers up. There's a whole no, I, I agree. Of there is trash oh. everywhere. I got seven voicemails this morning from the weekend at Stillwater. From naked people to drunks to vulgar language to cars burning out, etc. And I have three hidden trail cameras up there. So if we open up miles and miles of river, my first question is, and I don't want to get off topic, Chris, who's going to patrol that? And yeah. who's going to control that? To open That's why it's great, but yeah. it goes way beyond there. Yeah, no, I hear you. I, I understand. And that's why I think if there were some kind of permitting something, um, I know that's not an easy thing to implement, but I, I just like to think creatively about it. Um, the problem so. is everybody is trying to put their heads together, Lori, as you know, and we just, there are just a few bad apples and you have to be able to control those couple bad apples. You know, the best part was two weeks ago when I had Jen and Casey in my cruiser and we sat at Stillwater Bridge and we ran probably, Casey and Jen can verify this, 10, 12 license plates. How many of those license plates were from Deerfield, Conway, Sunderland, or Waitley, Jen and Casey? For Lori, that's not zoomed in. They're both holding up the sign of zero. Yeah. They came from Boston. They came from Natick. They came from Worcester. They came from Springfield. Yeah. 
I mean, no, I, no easy answers here. Um, I, one of the things yeah. that really, it just bothers me so much, Lori, is just with the nonprofits too, it's just how much can Deerfield subsidize outside interests? I mean, people have to contribute somehow. And so we've got to be yeah. able to fund this kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's I also agree. education. People don't understand river etiquette right. and they don't understand oh, that you, you, what you bring in, you got to pack out. And, and, and that is very disturbing as well. Yeah, so at a minimum, I'd, I'd like to see some educational signage and maybe even um, setting up some kind of um, volunteer monitoring team, you know, I don't know. But I, I'm willing to work on it. Um, out, out west, all the campgrounds are um, honor system, you know, pay. Some of them have um, camp hosts. Anyway, um, I just, just adding at this moment that we, we collaborate with, um, in other words, we don't do things that will shut off public access to the river unless we've really examined all the, you know, options there. So, <laughs> Lori, Lori, I am chair of the Franklin Conservation District and I'm president of the Mass Association of Conservation Districts. So there is coordination. Don't worry. Yeah. And I have my hand yeah. out on every level are, looking for money. <laughs> yeah, you are the um, the link. I I know that. Okay. So I, so I want to just say, um, you know, I appreciate all of the discussion here and, and the concerns Lori's bringing up and so forth. Uh, I think those are important issues, but, but the plan that we're talking about is really not a river access plan. It's a land conservation plan. And I want to just kind of make sure that that's really clear to everybody. This plan that we're talking about today that I'm asking you to endorse is not a plan that addresses river access. It's really about just preserving the land for flood storage purposes. Yeah. Um, and having said that, I guess I would ask um, whether you're able to um, take a vote on this plan uh, in terms of whether you want to uh, recommend it to the town for, for adoption. Sure. John, I can't hear you. What did you say? Does anybody want to make a motion to that effect? Well, since I just got the thing, I need I'd to like read a, it. Yeah, I'd like a little more time. Like them to... Okay. Why don't we do it by email then, if that's okay with you all, <clears throat> and maybe give you a week or so to read it? <clears throat> okay. We'll, we'll do that. All right, so uh, the second plan, if I can move on to that one, is the Flood Evacuation Action Plan for Historic Deerfield. And for this plan, we have, uh, we established a separate committee uh, of folks uh, representing all of the private schools and organizations in Historic Deerfield, plus many town officials. Um, and I guess we had maybe 15 people all together on that. Um, committee that worked uh, and met um, a number of times to talk about a strategy for uh, what would happen if there is a um, catastrophic dam failure or um, Hurricane Irene type of, of, of an event um, on the Deerfield River and whether or not um, the town would is adequately prepared for that type of an event. So um, this plan um, really develops a, a, a kind of series of scenarios based on the, um, the Great River Hydro uh, study that was done that looked at, you know, what, what would happen if there is a, if there is a, a series of, of, um, of events on the river. And the, if you're, if you're looking at the plan, it has in it um, a set of a set of maps that come out of the Great River Hydro study that show the flood flood inundation issues um, mm -hmm. and what might happen with a uh, with a flood. Most the biggest concern, I guess, is is if there was a a failure of the Somerset Dam or the Harriman uh, Reservoir Dam, and in it. In the case of, for example, a, a Harriman Reservoir Dam, uh, the Deerfield Academy 
uh, campus would have about three hours um, before a large uh, flood arrives and about six hours before the, the actual highest uh, flood levels uh, happen at, at the campus. And at six hours, the, uh, the football fields, for example, at Deerfield Academy would be under 42 feet of water. And uh, the main campus common would be under 16 feet of water. Um, Bement School would be under 28 feet of water. So it's, it's pretty catastrophic um, and not a lot of time for, you know, getting people out of uh, the historic Deerfield area. So we spent a fair amount of time thinking about this and we came up with um, a strategy um, and, you know, flood evacuation uh, methods and, lo and locations, the, the, um, the actual uh, routes for flood evacuation. Uh, and those are all summarized in the plan, but it kind of boils down to there's not enough time really to expect to evacuate people by vehicle. Uh, the strategy is would be to evacuate um, the students and the faculty and the residents by foot and move them um, on foot up to the uh, Eagle Brook campus where they would um, there's sufficient uh, space for shelter and and there's enough food for at least a few days worth of um, of hosting people there in the event of a pretty major event. Um, and we mapped out the flood uh, evacuation routes, both on foot and by vehicle. Those are in the plan. And um, the notification methods are also laid out in, in a fairly um, detailed way. So I guess that's my quick synopsis of the plan. Anybody have questions about that? I know, you know, Carolyn and Casey and, and John, uh, you were all involved in, in the plan, so at least uh, a number of you have been really in, involved in the details of this for some time. I'm, I'm obviously I'm fine with it because I think, you know, I was all my complaints were addressed. I, my, my still concern is, is just in general, like someone, I mean, today, just having to call Great Hydro and then verifying the Great Hydro is in fact drawing down so that there is capacity for the storm uh, Tuesday to Wednesday. It just is so annoying. And I, I don't know how to address that officially, but we, we shouldn't have to do that. We shouldn't have to verify that they are in fact doing this every, every time. I don't know. I mean, that's, that has yeah. nothing to do with our plan. The plan is working, yeah. but you know, to have us have to be chasing this down all the time is just, you know, I, I shouldn't have to call Bear Swamp. I shouldn't have to call Gray Hydro. Right. And who's going to do it? Should I not be doing it? Right. I mean, I worry and I don't trust them. And, and when I talked to Dennis Anir, the fire chief in um, Charlemont to verify they were in fact drawing down. He did verify that he also called and he is also standing was standing at the dam this morning watching them draw down because he doesn't trust them either. So I'm just saying that I wouldn't say that in public, but um, yeah. you know, to us somehow we've got to be able to deal with that. Okay. I mean, I, I have a you know, little group that we all call each other and, oh, what's, what's going on? What's going on? He's going to promise me if it gets over seven, um, you know, cubic, uh, 7,000 cubic feet per minute, he's going to call me to let me know it's coming. Some stuff is coming. There's going to be some stress and he'll keep me posted. But, you know, what happens? I mean, Dennis is older like me. What happens in, a, you know, in the next couple of years? Are we going to, how are we going to set this up? We don't have enough, you know, uh, monitoring, I guess, is what I, whatever. So I'm just throwing it out there that we, it is something that we should be looking at. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay. 
do you want to do the same thing with this one? Do you want to take a week to uh, look through it and have an email vote? Um, I think this seems more straightforward. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm willing to make a motion that we accept this now. <laughs> and I'll second it. Okay. Any other discussion? No, nope. thanks for all your hard work, Chris. I think it's amazing across the board. Uh, it brought it brought all the main players together that we were concerned about, especially if something happened when the kids were in school. So I really appreciate yeah. it. Okay, well, let's actually take a vote if it's okay with you. Um, uh, let's see. I guess we have to do this by kind of roll call. So Tim? Um, Tim Hilchey, aye. Uh, Casey? Casey Warren, aye. John? Yes. Okay, uh, Jennifer. Am I on this board? <laughs> <laughs> yes. so you're at the meeting. I'm at the meeting. <laughs> Jennifer Gannett. Hi. <laughs> okay. Kevin. Kevin Scarborough. Hi. Uh, Lori. Hi. Okay. Did I miss anybody? Well, I vote yes. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. I miss you. <laughs> All right. I, I probably should have staying, but that's all right. I, I think it's a good plan and I'm really pleased. I appreciate you putting so much time into it. It, it truly could save somebody's life. So, um, and it got the public, it got the private schools to the table. Yeah, it did. And they, um, they, they all weighed in pretty affirmatively as well um, by email. Right. So, and we got the nonprofits and the other nonprofits involved too. So that was good. Yep. Okay, well, thank you for your support on that. Um, the only other thing I wanted to do was to talk about um, grants. The, the current grant application that we have uh, filed with uh, the state for the MVP5 uh, project <laughs> is under consideration at this point. And um, I think it's Late August was the target date for getting a response back from the state. Um, so we will wait and see on that. And then, you know, I, I like to try to prepare well in advance for, for the next round. And I guess we're probably, you know, nine months away from that at this point. So it's not super urgent, but I would like to just have a initial discussion about what types of projects we might want to consider looking at going forward. And so, you know, we kind of started that earlier on in the meeting. Um, sounds like, you know, the stream restoration project um, uh, in the Route 5 and 10 in Mill Village Road area is a high priority. So I got that. Um, but beyond that, are there ideas that folks want to start thinking about developing and, and working on? River Road. Mm -hmm. uh, River Road Colbert uh, slash... I've got a, I've got an embankment that's failing. Um, that realistically, to be honest with you, um, it's going to be to the point where it's just going to fail. I lose the road, and then we'll go ahead and we'll deal with it from there. Um, so, can you give me a little more detail? Uh, is the embankment in the same area as the culvert? The the embankment is within probably four probably about 400 feet of the culvert. It's an extremely deep culvert. Presently right now, there's an eight, two eight by eight posts that were shoved inside the culvert someplace to try and keep the metal pipe from collapsing, um, which is still there. Um, that's gonna be a deep one. And that, i be honest with you, that's gonna turn into a bridge is what that's gonna turn into because of the size of it. But if you go just south of, south of that, um, every time that the river comes up and comes down, it's it's taking part of the embankment. Um, that entire embankment, probably within the last year, has dropped, without exaggerating, probably about 12 feet. Kevin, I'm not really sure. Is this um, was this a spot that you were talking about by the um, Deerfield Boathouse, or is this a different spot? This it is. Uh, let's see, where would that be? That would be south of the boathouse. Okay, so we are talking about the same sort of, I would say million to $3 million project. That'd be my guess because I had, I had an engineer go out and take a peek at it and they basically said 1.5 for the bridge 
and probably 1.25 for um, the other. And you know, and, and basically they're they're the way they're talking at this point. The only way to really save the road is to drive in pilings or to drive in sheathing, um, just because of the nature of what it is. I mean, obviously we know that laying out the the fabrics that they laid that they did on the southern end of River Road. We know obviously that didn't work out 100% because we're experiencing failure there again, where the road is starting to cave in a little bit. So, Kev, are we talking about the south end near Dick Kalashevsky's house, or yeah. are we talking about where, where oh, you both. and I walked it? Uh, the, the, the one that's failing, the one that's failing is, is by Dick's. Um, well, they're, they're both failing. Right, both, but I meant both. the one that we fixed under Mass Works. That is failing because that was a fabric based solution. And what Kevin's talking about is up by the bow house, our same place that we were talking about before. But yeah, that I thought we stabilized that one. I thought that was stabilized. It's not stabilized whatsoever. It's not even close to being stabilized. The only way to stabilize that because when they came out, they basically told me don't put any more material on top of it because all you're doing is you're adding too much weight and you're pushing it down. And I looked at them, I was like, well, that's all fine and well, but when the embankment disappears, there's nothing holding up the road, I got to put something down. And then that's when they were like, well, come up with 1.25 and we'll see what we can do. Yeah, I think that probably falls under the small bridge program. But the problem is I think it's too far away from the bridge or it's too far away from the culvert. You know, trying to, trying to get the two of them combined into one project is going to be a little difficult to do because... They're two separate issues. Well, the problem is you don't want to, I, I mean, the easiest thing to, is to let it fail so that we can go in and under emergency order and fix it immediately. But the problem is someone could get hurt. You know, I mean, all I can think of is when Upper Road failed, um, you know, it was just unbelievable that no one drove into that before we were able to close the road down because that was in the middle of the night there's no street lights. It's dark, just like this section of River Road. It's very dark. And um, someone could be just going home from work and run right into the, you know, run, I mean, have go into the hole. Yeah, I wonder if it's worth a site visit. Maybe we all schedule a site visit to go walk out yeah. there and take a peek at the two different issues. Number one, the culvert, but number two, where the, uh, the embankment's still collapsing. And that way everybody's on the same page. Chris can take pictures, whatever he needs. Maybe Zach can come out from time bond. I mean, we've given him enough money. He can come out and visit us and say hi. He, yeah. He, Zach's already been out there. He's already looked at it a couple times. So he's, he's, he's fully aware of that because he and I have also looked at another place that was just south of that, that he said that he was going to be trying to put something together to try and fix that culvert because that one is, again, causing the edge of the road to collapse. So John, I think your idea is a good one to schedule a site visit. That would be helpful for me and I'm sure other folks as well. Okay. So we got culvert and embankment issues on River Road. We got stream restoration. Uh, go ahead. Oh, so I'm just looking through the, um, the summary of the options for dealing with um, wetlands and I'm looking at this wetland reserve easement um, with some flooding near at, at the end of Mill, um, North Main Street. I'm just realizing that the marsh that was marsh and actually open pond that was on the end of Jackson Road um, in the time I've lived here has become um, you know almost dry and I don't know if um, restoring that as a flood um, um, reservoir type of thing is it something to look at. I'm looking, it says returns ag lands that were previously wetlands. Um, well, you know what I'm talking about. So I, I don't know. Um, it seems like you just lost a lot of flood storage with the natural succession that turned that back into um, a field instead of a pond. So I don't know if any, if that should be looked at at all. I don't know. Lori, under um, this, if we get the MVP five, well, they will be doing an assessment. Um, and this is what I wanted um, Keith Sultenberg to do with our healthy soils assessment. What it is is to look at all the parcels and to 
you know, put back into production, what could be put back into production potentially, what, I mean, just look at all the areas that have been filled in and, you know, should you open them up as wetlands again, you know, that kind of thing. Because we've had a change, there, you know, there's definitely a change. Yeah. Lori, I'd be interested in knowing um, a little bit more about that area. I, that's the first I've heard of, of that issue. So um, understanding any details about it that you have um, would be useful. And I'll try to take a look at it at some point too. Okay, yeah, just down the end of Jackson Road before the farmland starts. Um, okay. I'm sorry, I have to um, go to the Deerfield Academy opening meeting. But um, anyway, thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate all you're doing. And thank you, everyone, for coming to this meeting, because it's, it's really important we keep on top of this and move ahead. So thank you. Thanks, Carolyn. Bye, Carolyn. Bye. Thanks. I get to jump off in a minute, too, Chris, to jump onto that meeting. Yeah, I think we're just about done here. Uh, yeah, I have another one I can jump on, too. If folks want to, again, use email as a way to let me know of any other project ideas that you have uh, for potential new grant applications, that would be great. And um, I'll send you out um, a kind of a follow-up email to um, just summarize what, what we're still doing. We still need to have a, a vote on the land conservation plan and so forth. Um, so thank you all for participating today. It was very helpful. Um, and I hope you all stay safe and safe and healthy. You too. You too. Thank Exciting everybody. things happening. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Did you hear anything about the um, the reimbursement? Did you, I'm sorry. Did you hear anything about the reimbursement? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. I didn't know how long it t takes for them to get that back. The MVP three and four. I'm not sure either. I'll I'll ask Andrew. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Okay, end it all. Stop.